Hello, Cherries. Welcome to Live Jerry Cherry Sunday, episode 87. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a must know guitar hack for soloing. Is it a hack? Maybe. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> but it's, it's basically, basically a very easy way to solo. And it's diatonic. So basically, you're going to be playing the E major scale. And it's one position right here to start off with. Very easy position. And I'll show you. Um, I have a graph. I'll show you. It's the E major scale. And we're going to play three different progressions over that scale that, could, that are going to make that scale sound completely different. So let me flip on over to um, so right here, and I'll show you the scale, basically. So that's the E major scale, three notes per string. But this is the open position right here, down on the open. And you could do that, but let's just take that up an octave. So where you see the zeros, that's really going to be the 12th fret. So you just do the same fingering there. I didn't have a, another graph to show up here. But that's basically the same thing. What you're looking at right there on the chart is the same thing, but starting on the 12th fret, as well as the open, zero, open, down here. So it's the same thing. Hello, Kelly! I want to say hello to my friend Kelly here in the chats. So, um, as always, I will put a link in the description for the beginning of the lesson. So you can get right to that. But first, I want to say hi to Kelly. Hello, Kelly. How you doing? <laughs> Hopefully you're enjoying this Sunday afternoon. Thanks for spending some time with me. Cheers. Here's some coffee trying to get caffeinated here. And it's working. What are you drinking, Kel? Anything good? Are you on your second cut for the day? <laughs> all right, so without any further ado, I'll give you, first of all, a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Coffee cheers. <laughs> so let me go back over to here and um, kick on this chart. So once again, we have the circle of fifths. And what we're going to do with this circle is we're going to look at the E, because we're going to play in the key of E today. So we'll look on the outer circle. And we'll go clockwise all the way to where it says E. <laughs> so the letter before that, which would be counterclockwise, the A, is always going to be the fourth. The E is the root, or if you're in Canada, it's the root. And the letter following it is the B. It's the fifth. So right there you have your one, four, and five. Okay, and on the inner circle, corresponding to those letters, you have the F sharp minor, the C sharp minor, and the G sharp minor. That is the, the second, and the sixth, and the third, right there. You can tell by, because of the count, the, 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 um, the letter counts. E, then F sharp will be the two, G is the next letter, so that's three. Then you have A is the fourth, B is the fifth, and then C sharp is the, um, <clears throat> the sixth, right there. So. Knowing that, we're going to come up with um, three different progressions in the key of E. And I have a loop right here. And the first one is basically going to be A to B. So essentially, that's a four chord to the five chord. And it sounds just like this. We're playing A, B. So I'll show you a little um, closer up right here. I'm playing just a basically an A chord right here and a B chord. And I'm arpeggiating it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play basically just the scale. I'm going to play the E major scale over these two chords. And it's going to work right up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the A when it's in the A chord. I'm going to focus on the B when it's on the B chord. But it's all in this, this same scale. Of, of E major because it's chords that are in the key of E. So 
you know, one thing we could kind of consider too when when it's on the A chord, you could play the A, you could play the whole a triad of the A or an arpeggio. And on the B, same thing. Or you could kind of focus on the whole scale and see what what modes really because you're playing basically like an A Lydian and then a B Mixolydian right there so you can kind of focus on okay here's the A and what's cool about the A in the A in the E major scale is that you're playing an A Lydian right there you have your sharp fourth that's just basically in the E major scale starting on the A now this first chord is an A so you have that Lydian feel and sound right there during that chord. When it goes to B, you have that mixolydian B. So you're gonna be able to accentuate some of those notes and some of those intervals that make those chords sound interesting. Or you're kind of bringing out the sound of the chord based on the notes and the intervals that you play within this scale. But it's really simple because you're just playing and at, at some point, you could just forget about the intervals and just kind of play just the notes of the scale and just feel it and not really think too much. So let's try the first one. And we're going to go A to B. And it's going to give you, the, a, you know, like a Lydian and a mixed Lydian type of feel here. Check it out. That is basically playing the E major scale. It doesn't really sound like an E major scale, does it? I think it sounds uh, it sounds like a Lydian mode and a mixed Lydian mode, but I'm playing the E major scale. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully you're getting something good out of this so far. And uh, happy Sunday. I'm going to need another coffee after this for sure. <laughs> Good to the last drop, though. Kelly, oh, you're in cup two. <laughs> I love that. I love that.
Cal Cal. Coffee coffee. So, all right. So this next one, basically the same scale, same pattern. Let's go over to the, um, thanks again, guys, for spending your uh, Sunday with me. A million things you could be doing in the world. <clears throat> On the chart again, we're going to look here in the uh, E major area. And we're going to say, let's see, what else can we do in there? Let's do a... Um, Let's do a progression that accentuates two minor chords instead of two major chords. Okay, we can go from the two chord to the three chord. How about that? So it'd be an F sharp minor to a G sharp minor. Okay, so we'll get out of this. F sharp minor to a G sharp minor, playing the E minor scale. How easy is that? It's the same scale. Nothing changes, but the chords under it change and it's gonna sound different because of that. What you hear in one second. I have it saved right here. Let's see, Callie says, Oh, you know it, Jer, Jer. I can't milk a coffee all day like some people. <laughs> I know, I know. I can milk a coffee. That That's me she's talking about. And um, yeah, I could basically drink one cup of coffee all day long. And I could drink like three cups of coffee all day long too. Depends on how many I have. <laughs> so true. So, um, all right, let's try the second progression. It sounds like this. It's a F sharp major, no, F sharp minor to a G sharp minor. It sounds basically like this right here. Playing F sharp minor. So it's basically the two chord to the three chord of E. But I'm gonna play the E major scale. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of actually want accentuate the uh, the F sharp right here and the G sharp. Or I could play the F sharp here. But it's the same scale, which makes it really easy. Let's give it a whirl, shall we?
So there's the second one. Notice how that sounds completely different. It sounds minor. Thank you, Kelly. It's the same scale. I'm playing the same notes. Only I'm, because of that chord progression, plays a um, an F sharp minor, a G sharp minor. I'm kind of thinking about those notes. F sharp minor, the G sharp minor. And I know the rest of the scale is the major scale. So I'm just playing any note I want. I'm kind of just letting my ear guide me. Hopefully it works. I know I had a couple bad notes in there. But as much as you might think that I'm perfect, I'm far from it. No, totally kidding. <laughs> um, um, there I said it. I'm trying not to say um. It's what you don't want to do live. Say um. So, or so. So what are we doing here? We are, we, we took two different progressions now. Now we have one last one we'll get to. And I'm having a good time doing this. This is really, really fun. It's such good practice too because, um, man, you can really kind of play chord progressions and not have to really think too much. I'm trying to just kind of narrow it down to the least possible amount of thinking so you can focus on just the feel and the expression that you're trying to give. So, um, okay. Sorry about my 60 cycle hum. These pickups, single coil pickups here. So, let's see. We got one last one right here. And, um, you know, I have a question that um, what type of um, fretboard hacks do you like? <laughs> Is there any tricks that you like that are kind of like this? Let me know. I'd love to know. Let me know here in the, in the comments or um, in the chat here. And, um, so we'll get to this last one right here. So the last one we're going to do is a, um, it's another progression, but it's going to be, actually, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the, um, the chart here again. Always resort to our, um, or refer to our circle of fifths. And um, actually, I have a guitar course that, um, let me just talk about that for one second. I have a guitar course, it's brand new, it's called Essential Skills Guitar Course, and it goes over in depth about the circle of fifths, it has um, a way to memorize the entire fretboard so that you could easily access any note, and it goes into the blues, because that's where you get all of your soul and feel from, and it goes into some simple blues progressions and um, some simple blues ideas to play, like with the pentatonic scale and some mixolydian modes, things like that. But it gets really um, deep into um, those three topics. So please check it out. I'll put a link in my description for the Essential Skills guitar course. So please check that out. And we'll go back to our chart here. In the key of E, we're going to do a, a three chord to a four chord. So we'll find the three chord in the key of E. We'll go to G minor, G sharp minor. That's the three chords. You have E, F, G. We just count the letters. And it's the G sharp, so that's the three chord. We're going to go G sharp to an A. And it's going to sound like this. <clears throat> G sharp minor. A. <clears throat> Excuse me, A. G sharp minor. And we're going to play just the E major scale again. So we'll take that off. We'll put on the... Um, E major scale here. So it's going to be the same scale. Only we're going to focus on, when I'm playing that, I'm going to focus on the F sharp into the A. So when it goes to the A, I can really kind of make it sound Lydian. So check it out. It sounds like this. Sharp. Here's A. Here's a Lydian. An octave below. 
a good time i hope hopefully you're having a good time too and um it's really simple it's a lot of fun to do and as you can see i'm not really putting too much thought into it really i'm playing one scale and um you know so we'll leave you with that there's one last thing it's a bonus thing and i basically um if you want i did a video and i'll put a link in the description shortly after this lesson of three notes per scale in seven positions. So right now this is three notes per scale in just this one position, because we just did it here. So basically, I would take the same idea and play it in all seven positions. So you have this one right here. Then you have the second position. You have the third position. Fourth position. Fifth position. Sixth position. Oops. Right. Seventh position. Back to what we were just playing. The seventh position right here, you might already play E major in that position a lot. It's a really nice position to. So do all these same progressions here, but in the different fingerings, and you'll play differently. Because of where your fingers are and where you are on the neck, you'll do different type of licks than if, if you were playing in this position right here. Like I have been playing for the last 25 minutes already. So for instance, check out this, we'll do a little bit of this one. And um, say we'll do it down here in the sixth position. Oh no. We'll do the first one where, where it was an A to a B. As you can see, my A note is right here. And B is here. So it, it lends itself perfectly to like completely different sounding riffs. Check it out.
I'm playing different type of stuff, I would just recommend going through every position. Right there, even in this one. The second fingering. Up here, just find the, the chords. Find all that stuff. Hello, Ritesh. How's it going? I see you got a question here. How do you utilize scales in your playing, and why do you need to learn scales, pentatonic, major, minor, music? It's a great question. Let me bring this up right here, Ritesh. How do you utilize scales in your playing, and why do you need them to learn? Well, go back and watch this lesson <laughs> from the very beginning, and I'll show you real quick. We'll, we'll summarize this right here. By going back to, let's see, where am I right here? We will uh, take that down. We'll go back to the circle of fifths right here. Why utilize, how to utilize scales in playing? Well, and why? Well, if you look at this E, we'll summarize here once again. If you look at the E on the outer circle, if you look at the letter before that is an A, the letter afterward is a B, the E would be the one, the four is the, no, the A is the 4, and the B is the 5. So, And in the smaller circle, you have the F-sharp minor, the C-sharp minor, and G-sharp minor. Those are six chords in a key. So if you played the E scale, like I'm playing right here, you can come up with all kinds of progressions, and they all share that same family of notes. So it's, this is a scale, an E major scale. You've heard those notes a million times, right? So those six chords... And there's actually one more. It's not in there. So these six chords, you can come up with different arrangements of, of mix them around. You can go A to B, E to B, G sharp minor to C sharp minor, whatever you want. You can mix them up. And that's how people write songs. So in the case of what I'm, what I'm doing, I came up with a progression that's A to B. Right? And because it's in E, the key, the, like the mother notes, right, is E. So we play the E major scale over those two chords. And somewhere in that scale, there's an A and a B. Back to the E major scale. E. But if I go up the scale, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. So when I hit the A chord, I'm going to play the A note. When I play the B chord, I'm going to play the B note, and it's going to sound good. Like, take a listen. A, then B. I'm in the key, I'm in the key of E, but I'm playing the notes A and B. That's why a scale, knowing a scale, is helpful.
right. <laughs> Hopefully that helped. Since practicing scales are so musically dry and boring, making no musical sound and sense. Um, wow. Okay. Since practicing scales are so musically dry and boring, making no musical s sound and sense. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> okay. So, um, are they dry and boring? It's kind of hard to say. I mean, it could be dry and boring, but really everything that you hear and everything that you play is a scale. So it could be dry or boring, or it could be beautiful and exciting. And so I don't, I don't know where you're going with that exactly. Uh, make no musical sound or sense. Oh, I thought you're okay. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense to you, Ritesh. And, uh, but my pleasure. Hopefully you have a, a, a good outlook on it now and you kind of get a little sense of it, you know. Um, did you get any of that, what I was saying? Because <laughs> it could be a little tricky, you know. But if you look at it, it's like, you know, it's the E major scale and I have all these chords and I could play that scale or I could sing that scale. And most songs that you hear are hit songs. Basically, they do that. They're diatonic. You know, it may be a little boring if you're playing diatonic like, like I am right now in one key. But what's interesting about this circle, too, is that you could, you could change keys. You know, you could play like parallel minor, parallel chord. So you can get really in depth with them which I, I actually go into in my course. I'll put a link in my description. I just came out with my first guitar course. I'm really excited about it. And I go into depth about fretboard memorization because, you know, it's good to know where every note is quickly. I go into a, the circle of fifths and how to use it like we're doing now and a little bit deeper. And then I go into playing the blues, which um, is all about soul and feel. And um, so there you have that. All right. Ritesh, very, very cool. And um, how long have you been playing there, Mr. Ritesh? Let me know. Are you beginning? You've been playing a while and uh, just trying to pick up some stuff. And thank you for spending some time here with me today. And uh, so let's see. I wanted to um, go ahead and thank you guys for sticking around and watching. I want to thank Kelly, who is uh, just an amazing gal and singer and musician, and um, she does a live every Tuesday and Thursday on her Facebook channel, Facebook slash Kelly's Music Corner, where she tells stories and then ends it up with um, playing a couple songs with her dad, who's a guitar, a great guitar player, Fortune. So check her out for sure on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Kelly's Music Corner at 7 o'clock. Ritesh, can you tell if you know who discovered these scale chords in history? Can you tell if you know who just wait? Can you tell if you know who discovered these scale chords in history? <laughs> Let's see who discovered these. Well, I think um, probably Bach, right? You know, three to four years here now. I think that like Bach, I, I hear that Bach invented a lot of the music that we hear today, like the way that music resolves and the way that um. Because before Bach, it was a lot more scrambled and it didn't make sense. I think he kind of put it, made some musical sense out of it. I have to go back and, and uh, do some history on that. Learn my history on that as well. And, uh, but I know that uh, the inventions, Bach inventions, is basically what it is. I mean, they were inventions. He invented certain progressions and types of music. And uh, he invented it and mastered it, you know. <laughs> so... If you want to know how music works, check out some Bach, learn some, some classical music there, and um, or learn the circle of fifths because everything is right in there. I think there's a whole world of music in that circle. So uh, three to four years, awesome. Three to four years, that's good. And uh, okay, so let me go back over to here. And thank you guys. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, let me know in the comments section. I go live every Sunday at the same time, 1 o'clock. I also go live on um, 
Facebook, I do originals and some fun covers every Thursday night at 7.30 at Facebook slash Jerry Cherry. And uh, had a really good time playing with you guys today. And love playing guitar, especially on Sunday afternoons with you guys. And any specific amount of scales to be musical? Not really. I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. You know, I played one scale and I had three completely different sounds. So because there's seven notes in a scale, you could basically, there's seven sounds in a scale. And there are other scales. There's the major scale, there's the melodic minor scale, there's a harmonic minor scale, there's a double, there's a harmonic major scale, there's a double harmonic major scale. And within those scales, there are seven notes that sound completely different. So there's a bunch of scales but really, you know, you could focus on one or two and just make them sound good. And the, there's the the five, and I actually made videos on them, where three notes per string, much like I'm talking today, the five different scales, and um, major scale, harmonic minor, melodic minor, harmonic major, and double harmonic major. And I'm pretty sure those are all the scales, right there. And um, there's modes within them, which give, you know crazy sounds they go really really deep in that but to start off with it's just the major scale like what we're doing here today the major scale and the seven modes within the major scale like I was doing I was playing different modes and check this out watch I'll do one last thing and I'll toggle through this while I'm playing this is um one scale but with three different progressions and watch how different it sounds oh here's one Progressions, same scale. That's an example of three different chord progressions. The first one was an A to a B, playing the E major scale. The second one was an F sharp minor to a G sharp minor, same scale, E major scale. The third one was a G sharp minor to an A. All those chords are in that circle of fifths within the chord family of E, right there. So that's just a quick summary of what we're doing. So thank you for spending some time with me. Any questions about it, leave me in the comments section. And I, I do this every week. So if you have any ideas for next week, if something's been on your mind where you're like, man, I really wish I knew this, let me know and we'll cover it next, next time. All right. So thanks for spending time with me. Thank you, Ritesh. And thank you, Kelly. And everybody else who's watching this replay all over the world. I love you. I'll see you next time. And remember, be cool, be kind, and be cherry. And if you want to go even deeper, Ritesh, on the circle of fifths, I'll put a video right there for you all right so thank you very much guys i love yous and uh let's see one, one last thing real quick here if i could figure out solo stuff keep i could figure out solo stuff can you tell me how much musically i'm missing apart from figuring out songs and jamming along with broken solos with the songs? well you know learning songs is one thing and it's really good to learn songs it's also good to know why the songs are structured the way they are. Like it's all songs, I mean, they have chord progressions. If you can understand what they're doing in the chord progressions, then you gain a musical knowledge, and then you'll start seeing that all the songs are pretty much the same. If you learn one song, you can learn a million songs, because after a while, they all start to share the same progressions, and um, you'll start to be able to learn songs really quick, You'll start to understand like how to solo and improvise over any song, any type of progression. And understanding 
some of the theory behind these songs is helpful. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you know, you get a pizza and it's already made for you and you just eat the pizza, it's delicious. But if you got the ingredients for the pizza, you might be able to make different types of pies. You know, one day you could have like a margarita pie. The next day you could uh, maybe put some pepperoni on it, you know? <laughs> well, you can tell I'm getting hungry. All right, guys. So remember, I'll put another video right there to check out later on. Love you guys. And uh, have a great Sunday and a great week. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for the chats and all that stuff. Love you guys. Ciao.